and welcome to Positive Talk. Today on the program, we are continuing with the discussion that we had last week where we were looking at uh, peer pressure. And this week, we are continuing with the different pressures that uh, young people face on a day-to-day -day basis, mainly now looking at the type of relationships that they would want to have with their parents or guardians so that they are in a position to deal with these pressures. So join us as I'm dialoguing with young people. What is the ideal relationship you'd want to have with your parent or your guardian? To be close to them so that I can tell them anything and anything without them worrying. So that they can trust me on, without them worrying about what I'm doing and what I'm going to do. I think it should be easy to approach them, to talk about anything and anyone. And you should feel secure in that environment to talk to them. And you should feel that they shouldn't judge you for what you're asking them. Also, I would like to have a great ideal relationship with them so that we can interact together any type of story, any topic, whether my personal feelings or whatever, I should be free to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I would say the ideal one, looking at myself because this year is my writing year for mm -hmm. Upper Six, mm -hmm. I would say I would want them to be a bit more open to changes in my life. I would want my parents to be more understanding, more open to listening to what I have to say and to what I have, like how I think, because as I'm maturing, I want them to kind of think of me as an adult and not just their child, but as an individual person. But at the same time, I don't want too much freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I'm not part of their yes. community. Mm -hmm. But then I want to have the freedom to be myself, to, to develop myself. To be quite honest, maybe just an open relationship where we can relate with our parents and they can relate to us and actually listen to our needs and, you know, our perspective of things, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't want parents who rush into you know, a rage, if you do something wrong. We just want our parents to listen to us. We talk to our parents, have a really close relationship with them. I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, actually, I would think um, to create a good relationship with a parent is just to be close together as like friends. Because with a parent, like you, my mom, and I'm the kid, it's more like we get a friendship, we get to be close, and everything will be okay. Like they say, Guru Guru Pitamuse, Tadi Giva Kuchke. So that I respect you, then you give me respect back. I feel that society dictates that we're supposed to have a specific relationship where we honor them and we respect them and more like tend to be more afraid of our parents. Mm. But I believe in a relationship where me and my parents could be like friends. Like yes, the respect will be there because obviously they raise me up, they feed me, they put a roof over my head. But I just want to be in a relationship with my mom where I can tell her, oh mom this is happening, oh mom I like this girl mm. without being afraid of what she can do or mm -hmm. any other repercussions. I want them to be supportive. Uh, the one who care for me when I'm in need and the one who help me with the homework too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, probably the perfect one. Mm -hmm. Why you get, don't get beaten up? Because <laughs> getting beaten up is something else. And um, like someone I can actually talk to about anything that I want. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So what, when you misbehave, when you've been naughty, what do you want your parent to do? They should just sit down with me and talk, talk to me. Make me understand, not Nisham, no, <laughs> no, no, but talk to me like in a proper way, like that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is this way, this way, this stage, in this stage. So, do I just run out? She's like, I never knew from the word respect and never know what you are respect. It's like a mutual respect between parents and children. Yeah, and uncle, uh, she makes you footy, but they don't want to get very free. Kuvana, wow, I found a girl, I try to keep it up for a new tower. Now, I saw another one was to say, very free. When you're looking at the crop of parents that we have now, would you say they do understand you as young people to give you that relationship that you're talking about? I think actually parents of today have somewhat because as time progresses they've become more modern they're not really that like they're not extremely open yet but then every parent is like that every parent watches out for their child that way but then they're very open to hearing what we have to say they're willing to advance with us with time so yeah mm -hmm. to be honest i think it depends with our parents moods 
to be honest. Sometimes you come back from work and you're tired and we do something that you're not happy with, you jump into a rage. And then there's sometimes when you're really just in a good mood so you have time to understand and whatever, yeah. Ah, oh, not really. These days they're taking us for granted. Like they leave us to do whatever we want because these days we are naughty too. Like these days we drink and stuff, come home late so they can't control us too. How do you want us to support you when you're being naughty then? Even though we're naughty, they must show us they're there for us. Like, yeah, I will beat you one day. Rather, rather than keep quiet. <laughs> yeah. So what do you want us to do? When you've been naughty, what should I do? Yeah, you come I, home at, 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 at midnight, what do you want me to do? I want you to take your role and I want you to say, I will beat you one day. <laughs> but, but not beat you. Rather than keep quiet, because if you keep quiet, I already know my parents are supportive. That's what I'm looking for, like my parents must be supportive. Do you talk to your mom about um, your sex life, your relationships, yeah. sexual and reproductive health rights issues? No, I don't want to talk to my dad about it since we met. So we share the ideas since he was been through the age. So he does not want to. With my parents, mm -hmm. I would say no. Mm -hmm. Only because I think what my dad actually does, I personally am not comfortable with it. But then my dad does, yes. Well, what more can I say? You heard it, especially from the clowns. What they're saying is, as parents, we need not to scare our children. We also heard from the kids the issue of spanking. But what young people really are looking at is an ideal relationship where we become friends with them and so that they are able to actually share anything with us. Join us after the break. Watching positive talk with Chariro. Ula la, mama mia. Welcome back as we continue with our discussion on positive talk, where we are looking at the ideal relationship that should exist between parents and children, particularly when we're looking at issues of sexual and reproductive health rights to do with young people. And the theme that we're running with is, we are saying umbimi doga kwete, especially targeting young people, where we are saying engage with your adults, engage with your parents. You can learn from them. They've lived through the experiences that you are going through now. And now I'm joined by um, uh, some students. They are going to be sharing with us their own views. And um, I would want to start off with you. Um, What's the ideal relationship that you would want to have um, with your parent? Oh, I would love the kind of relationship whereby I would be able to talk about anything with my parents. Is that happening with your, with, with your parents? And if not, what's hindering that type of relationship? Not exactly. Well, with my parents, they are kind of scary, so me approaching them <laughs> is kind of difficult. I would want to come to you. Uh, when you are looking at an ideal relationship, are you having that ideal relationship where you can discuss with your parents your first kiss? Your um, girlfriend, uh, first sexual encounter, your wet dreams, anything. What happens is that like on my mother's know. side, it's more like you really want to tell her stuff on one on one occasion, but the next thing she's all moody and you can't really say much. And on my dad, it's a totally different story and um, you can't really look into telling him about that stuff. So if I'm getting you correct, you're saying when it comes to somebody you can talk to, the counsellors are actually better than your parents? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to you. Well, I would like to tell my parents all that stuff, but then I don't feel comfortable telling them that. Like, they are very judgy, like, they will judge me on what I say. And if I do have a girlfriend, they won't really like her sometimes, so, yeah. So what would you want your parents to, to do when you have a, a girlfriend? You're saying they, they, they would not uh, like her, and if they don't like her, you love that girlfriend. She's giving you the, the goosebumps, but the parents are saying no. <laughs> So what would you want to happen? Maybe the parents have seen something in that girl and they're t trying to tell you that. Yeah, I have had that before where they don't like my girlfriends, but then some, I would like them not to judge me if I bring a girl. Like mm. My dad especially does judge a lot, so mm -hmm. I hope that they do understand sometimes okay. what I'm saying. Yes, and coming to you? I'm very close to my mom, other than to my dad. So with my dad, it's rare that I actually talk to him because the only time we actually talk is when you know, we're watching a soccer game or a rugby game, you know, and supporting the same team. But with my mom, I, I feel like I can talk to my mom about anything because she's the type of person who will walk up to me and ask me questions. 
-hmm. Yeah, so I feel that, you know, if you have a parent that's, you know, close to you, try to relate to them. Yeah. And coming to you? It depends that most parents don't really understand that as much as we should learn from their mistakes, the world is changing. Yeah. And there's not much that we can do about it. And things they used to do when we were, they were our age are completely different compared to what we're doing. So at least my mom understands that and she's a bit young, a bit hip, but now, so she knows what to really say and do. And she knows how to take in information. I really love my mom because she's understanding and sometimes she's trustworthy. Uh, I can share all my secrets with my mom. Like, I just trust. I told my mom. Oh. 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 <laughs> Name, please. <laughs> um, she understood and she says that I must not have sexual contact with him or any other oh contact gosh. besides hugging him. So, how would you want us to bridge that gap so that we understand you? He, he raised a very pertinent issue where he said, when we grew up and what's happening now, things have totally changed. And you're saying we need to be hippie like you. Um, so how do we raise that gap? It's just more of an understanding of where the world is going and how everyone is living. We're not saying that drinking and smoking, having sex is right. But we're saying it's out there and the more you hide us from it is what's going to happen is when we actually get out by ourselves yeah. that's when abuse and a lot of this nonsense gets up to well, what do you want us as parents to do then so i just feel parents should just be you know let us go you know, should accept that we're growing up yeah there's instances where i'm seeing you you're actually heading for disaster and when i'm telling you don't do this it's because i know it will put in, put you into trouble i think they should also try see the world through our eyes because mm -hmm. since domain said the world has evolved so they yes. need to start seeing it how we see it so they can understand how okay. what we go through when we need to see the world through your eyes what do we need to see tell us like what we wear how we go out and what we do how we do you go, go out? out okay tell us how do you go out what should you wear some people obviously like to go out to do naughty things mostly it's because their parents are very strict on them so when they get that freedom they don't really know how to use it yeah. but then some people like myself i'm more relaxed when it comes to going out i'm not a fan of going out and drinking and having fun i'll have i'd rather have people come over and we have brides yeah. or we hang out together as friends do something different something that's not of the norm and I think doing things like that will get your parents to at least be a little bit lenient on you. I think also sometimes we should know the limits, like he said, like we shouldn't push it too far, like yes. saying we want to go to Paris or something like that. We should like just keep it calm. Yeah. What these guys have said, I think it really makes sense. But at the same time, I mm -hmm. think we should also consider our religious views of our own um, culture and our values that we have. And I think we should learn to observe those in order for our parents to trust us more. Mm -hmm. It's not like the Bible is going to change. Mm -hmm. If it says do not sleep around, it's yes. not like it's going to change because it's the 20th century to say sleep around. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm basically saying is that we should also own our, what, our religious views mm -hmm. in order for our parents to trust us more. Mm -hmm. Then our culturally, we should try to make our parents understand according to our religious views at the same time. So now as we wrap up this, this uh, segment, I want you to say one key message to the parents, particularly when we're looking at that relationship that you want to have to have with them. I think our parents should be more friendly and understanding, um, basically to try and find out what's really going on in our lives before they go on to judge us. Mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. I think they should come at us like friends, but with the wisdom that they have from being old and help us with that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I personally believe kids learn from their own mistakes and obviously as parents you'll be there for your kids. But you'd rather let them make those mistakes and be there for them when something bad happens. Yeah. yeah. And I would also say be a little bit open-minded. That's what really needs to happen to parents. Mm -hmm. Be open-minded. And don't judge because a lot of kids have different values, different ways of living. So you might not live the same yeah. way as your cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm done. Yes, yeah. I feel like um, our parents should trust us more and trust with us that, and to know that their century and our century is two different things. We are now teenagers and we need to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. This yeah. Century is yes, we had yeah. it. As parents, the children, the young people are saying we need to understand them. And they, they've raised the issue that we learned from our mistakes. Sometimes it might be helpful also to let them learn from their mistakes. Join us after the break as we then discuss with some experts.
Welcome back as we continue with our discussion on Positive Talk, where today we are looking at the relationship that should exist between parents and children. So I'm joined by Susan, Honest and, and Musa. Um, Susan, I would want to start off with you. We mm -hmm. heard from young people where they are talking about when they want to be disciplined, um, particularly when you're looking at the peer pressure that, that they have. Also, trying to open up on sexual and reproductive health issues uh, uh, when they have that first kiss, the first boyfriend, first girlfriend, they would want to share with you as parents. But really what came out is, as parents, you are too strict. Sometimes we don't give them that opportunity. So what I do relationship do you want to have with, with your child? Uh, the relationship I want with my child is to be able to say, come to me when there's issues or questions. And yes, there has to be discipline, but because my child is older, I, the discipline is more, let's sit down and let's talk about how you reacted, why you reacted to, to a situation. It's so important that you can talk to your children uh, freely and if you can find a time where you can go out and have a tea or coffee or, or an ice cream even and just go to a park and just talk mm -hmm. and eventually that will come out because they aren't rushed. Mm -hmm. you but give them the, the young people, when, mainly when, when we're talking to them, especially when it comes to them coming to you when they're having a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, we had mm -hmm. one boy who was saying, my parents would not approve of my girlfriends. So as a result, I actually will not go to them and tell no. them because they, uh, they will not accept. No, I, I had the situation with mine and it's a girl and I wanted to see that boy in a social situation, uh, talk, talk to him, um, even in the house, have him come over so he's not hiding from me, have him come over, get to know the boy. And sometimes you might be surprised that boy isn't so bad after all. Mm -hmm. um, coming to you honest, um, yes. we are looking at the ideal <coughs> relationship that should exist between our parents and children. We had the issues that young people were, were raising. So yeah. what would you view as an ideal relationship you would want to have with your, your own child, your son, your daughter? We are there to be friends to our children, not to be enemies to our kids. If we want our children to understand us, let's be friends to them. Me, I play with my daughter, she's 15 years old. I play with her, sometimes we run around, we chase each other. It's, it's not because I want her to be free so that if someone proposes her, she can come to me and say, Daddy, there's someone who is saying this and this and this to me. And I guide my child from that. But if I'm not free to her, she can be free to me. Even my what son... What you are saying yeah? is the idea. Yes. But is that how the situation is when we are looking at the reality now in terms of the relationships that exist between parents and children? Because it's, we it's, tend to always say to them, do school, do school, do school. This is what you're supposed to do. Boyfriends after school. But maybe you had a boyfriend when you were in Form 1. Yeah. To a lot of parents these days, it's not like that. If I see my child having a boyfriend, I started to beat her, to harass her. You're not doing your school, your, your school work, you're just thinking about boyfriends and what, what. Instead for me to understand why she's going out with a boyfriend. Um, Musa, coming to you, what needs to be done? You heard what your two colleagues shared about to bridge that gap where sometimes there is a misunderstanding between parents and, and, and children. I think it needs to be an open relationship, one that is built out of trust, one that is built out of the foundation of certain principles that we both believe in as a core, as a family. But you know, all our principles are socialized or come from particular areas of our society. Uh, but we understand now that the issues that young people are coming across now are very different from uh, when and, uh, all of us probably grew up. So we have to understand raise the awareness of the parents, get them to actually be uh, educated and be uh, aware of the issues that young people are going through nowadays and be able to interact at that level with their child to actually understand what their kids are doing. Create that openness so that they can actually have that two-way engagement between parent and child. Is it not easier said than done? Um, because 
when, when you're looking at the reality and what's in the book, what's theory, there's a mismatch. It's a learning process. It's a process, so you actually have to learn what your children and understand what they're doing, um, understand their peers, how they think, how they're engaging, what is influencing them nowadays, and also understand that you know we're now in a, living in a in a digital age where things are constantly changing. Nothing is the same today as it's going to be tomorrow. So we have to be very dynamic in how we become parents of today. I've got two very young children. So as I sit here, as I stand here trying to talk to you, I'm also trying to understand what's their world, what is their world going to be like. Mm -hmm. So what would, what message would you give to parents and children, particularly when we are looking at the issue of the relationship that, that should exist between them, between the two? Keep your mind open. Mm. Be compassionate. Yes. Um, and be able to let the child express to you how they feel. I think that's a good approach. Mm -hmm. I want to say to parents and to the kids, let's be friends and let's love one another and let's support one another. Let's stand for one another. If we do that, we are going to conquer each and everything. And I'm sure parents would want to ask you, how do we become friends with our kids? They are our kids. He's my child. She's my daughter. How do I become friends? If the kids, they want to play a ball, if you can start to throw a ball to me. That's where I can start with him also or her. I throw the ball. I start. If you do that, that's where we build the, that relationship. But if my child he throw the ball to me, I said, hey, don't disturb me. Tomorrow you can't do that. But if I started to do that, it would be easier. So I, I urge all parents and children to be responsible, you know, to nurture their relationships and uh, be open enough to be able to discuss any issues that might be troubling the child, troubling the parent, any issues that are pertinent to their uh, sexual reproductive health rights or them actually realizing those sexual reproductive uh, health rights. And to remember that they do come with responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. we are hearing it from the parents. Yes, we heard from young people where they are talking about the need to be friends. And the parents are really just emphasizing that same point where we are saying parents and children, for that relationship to exist, there is need for them to be to be friends. And we are talking about all the other pressures. Yes, there is nothing amiss for a child to come to you as a parent and talk to you about that first boyfriend, that first kiss. Let's open that dialogue because you are the person that they are free to talk to. Yes. And we also had some complaints from the children where they are saying sometimes as parents we tend to become too harsh mm. so I think this is the time for self-introspection as parents so join us again next week as we continue with other interesting discussions until then goodbye thank you